pretty. Don't we look oh, awesome? So pretty today. Don't we look amazing? Constantly. Always. Always. Always looking good. Always smiling because it's so warm. It's too warm. Not for this one. Uh, well, yeah. This no, is my weather. I like when it's summer and I like mm -hmm. when it's hot out, but sometimes it's a little too <sighs> muggy. But it's not muggy today. It's like no, direct. Today it's just a little. It's warm. It's direct. But not humid. The yeah. humidity comes tomorrow on Friday. Oof. 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 Are you a fan of humidity? No, I don't love humidity. Nobody. Nobody loves, really loves. I've never humidity. heard anyone say they love humidity, but I like hot. So I'll take the humidity. Um, but this weekend will be awesome. It's going to be high seventies, not humid. That's good. Sunny, high seventies. Like. Ralph is happy. That's yeah. That makes me happy. Perfect weekend weather. Perfect weekend weather to be inside working all Saturday. Oh, I, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm I'm coaching comedy, so oh. it's so it's work, but it's happy. It's I'm happy. happy. Work. It's happy work. It's good to happy work. Um, what's going on? Anything exciting happened since last we spoke? No, the weekend was not appropriate for me to be pooling, so I couldn't go to the pool. What happened? So oh, did, how was the barbecue? Exciting. Because last time we had our, we recorded, you were about to go to the barbecue in your building. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was two weeks. That was, was two that? weeks ago? So was, yeah, that wasn't last week. It was, wait. No, it was, it was last week. It was, it was last, last week. week. Oh, barbecue was good. I was so hungry <laughs> that I literally <laughs> couldn't see. I felt like I was going to pass out. And I inhaled an entire hot dog and burger in probably five minutes. The entire thing was gone. And then I felt sick. You made me so hungry after we before, during, and after we recorded last week because you kept talking about <laughs> hamburgers and hot dogs. So I came home and immediately made myself a huge dinner. Like, I don't oh. usually eat that late, but I was like, I'm so hungry. I was so hungry. <laughs> I was so hungry. All That's why I kept talking about it because it was just like there's food down there. And then, like, people were like, we're going at 630. I'm like, it's like 557 starts at 6. I'm ready to go down there, like, just because I'm so hungry. Not right. even like I care about who's there or what's Were happening. there a lot of people there? Yeah, there were a lot of people there. Was it, it was just good. people from the building? Yeah, it oh, was okay. good. I mean, it's not like, woo, you know. But it was nice. It's nice the staff makes the food and serves it, and which is nice. And we talked to people, and yeah, it was cool. It was nice. Did you make any new nice. friends? Um, I met a woman. Yeah, I met one new woman in my build in my in the place while I was there. Okay, she's somebody's mother that I know like somebody I know from outside of the building's mom and she like wanted to meet me and she doesn't know that many people so I was like helping her meet people and introducing her being the social chair that I am of course <laughs> if you had to make a rough uh back of the napkin guesstimation about what the the age of the population in your building would it skew older or younger it's both. Really? That's what's cool about it. It's like such a mix of ages. Okay. And that's what I like about it. Like there's definitely some much older people in there, but there's also very young people in their 20s. There's people in, lots of people in their 30s, lots of people in their 40s, people in their, I mean, honestly, every okay. age. That's cool. There aren't a lot of kids, little kids. And that's mostly because like, it's hard to have kids in a condo unit, you know? It's and hard to have kids uh, in 2022 period. Right. <laughs> But there's not lots of space. There is the pool and all that. So there are people with kids. Um, you know, more so you're going to see infants, people that have had, like, their first kid or whatever, right. or really little kids. But you don't see, like, teenage kids or even middle school kids. I think people move out by the time their kids are that old. So you don't see a lot of that. Move to the suburbs. Yeah. Move to Mount Airy. Yeah, move, move about. Yep. Germantown. If you're not from around Philly, those are the... Those are, like, foreign words, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Um, what has happened? Um, I got a new, uh, I don't, I don't know if it's a, I don't know if I can call it a job, but it's a new opportunity to Ooh, do more, like more improv. I don't want to say too much about it right now, but it's, it. um, I'm not going to jinx it, but, uh, yeah, it's very exciting. Cool. Um, I am filling my life with <clears throat> comedy. And it's amazing. I love and I that. it's amazing that I can like over the weekend we went to a friend's birthday party uh, a few blocks away and met all of his like friends that we've never seen before and we were all talking and 
one of the guys was like, oh, you know, we were doing the, what do you do for work? What do you do for work? And he was like, so what do you do? And I was like, I'm a full-time comedian. And I was like, it was so cool You're also to be like able to say that. I'm still a coach. I still have the training. I'm still like bringing that into what I do, but it's like a all, all of my focus is now on doing what I do through the lens of comedy mm -hmm. more more broadly and and more often and it's just awesome i'm happy ralph's happy kristen's happy i'm and i'm a happy you, little camper what's our show called hey let me hey, ask you. <laughs> <laughs> i was about to say how you ask me something and i'm like how no. how do you say hey, let me ask you something hey how do you happy? ask a question <laughs> Uh, wow. wow, you okay. don't know the name of our I show? I, I was trying for a minute, my words got jumbled a little wow. bit. Wow, uh, wow, I, I don't mean to... I'm fired. I don't mean to scare you, over. but our next our next uh, episode is going to be our one-year anniversary. I know, I'm so excited. June 22nd, I, did I think, we, we, had, we posted our first That's episode. That's insane. So, ooh. We accept gifts for anyone we accept, listening. Uh, yeah, um, gift cards. Uh, Olive Garden gift cards. I love Olive Garden. <sighs> endless breadsticks. Oh my God, they're so good. Endless, endless. Then they don't even they don't even make the breadsticks there. They just get pallets and pallets of plain old breadsticks like in the back of a truck, and they just whatever they do, slather, keep doing it Olive Garden. They slather butter and olive oil and yeah, garlic. Whatever on. they're doing, it's fine with it. me. I'm still gonna put it in my mouth. Yeah, I don't I'm care. It. Thinking about it right now is not <laughs> making me hungry again. I put a lot of stuff in my mouth that's been on the back of a truck, so I'm I'm uh, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that one. We're right gonna there. let that one yep. lay so there. Right. We'll put yep. a put a pillow under its head and let it sleep. Yep. We're not gonna disturb no. that one. No, it's like it's a family show. At all. <laughs> this is a family show. I don't I hope not. I don't know. Some people may be listening with their kids. Uh they may be stuck in the fifties and we, gather around the radio. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Right? If you do that, please please send us a video. Uh hey, if you do that, no judgment. That's great. We would love it. Yeah, absolutely. Because we have, you know, such exciting topics it's good for most family depending on our topic the age little kids would be like what no. little kids would be well i mean we we could do a whole episode about i don't even know what kids are watching these days don't ask me i don't our, have any our, we don't uh, have any how can we do a show about that are the uh teletubbies still a thing oh my god probably Ralph. not no, we're not doing this episode, this episode this. the wiggles teletubbies are probably like elderly do they age? I don't know. <laughs> I don't really. They, they were scary enough in their youth. I don't really want to see an aged Teletubby. I want to see a whole like gritty show on on uh, Netflix about teenage Teletubbies, like going through puberty, oh my God. getting bullied in high school, finding love, finding themselves, finding themselves within their tubbies. Within their tubbies. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so uh, about Yeah, that. let's run with that. I'll call some people. I'll have my people call your people. All right, yeah. It's really good. Everybody's very excited right now. I don't have people. I no. wish I had people. I mean, I'll call my friend and I'll make them be a people. Yeah, I mean, I have people. Like, I have friends. I just don't like industry people, like people, people who can make stuff We don't stuff have happen. a producer I don't think yet I have that, or no. an assistant. Because no. if we did, I'd have them in about 20 minutes refill this delicious ginger ale. Right? I get, damn. Canada Dry so Cranberry good. Ginger Ale. Delicious. I, we're giving them free publicity right now, but, really it's, are, but it's so yummy. good. So, yeah. Especially in the summer. It's very refreshing. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, so good. Um, all right. So, uh, we've wasted an <laughs> <laughs> We didn't waste any time. I, I Talking enjoy. about a whole bunch of... I enjoy. Yeah. Uh, but no, today we want to talk about uh, triggering. Because not a gun. Not a gun. Uh, but the the act of or the feeling of being triggered by something. Like what that is. Like what is what is triggering? What thing? What kind of things trigger people? Uh, and like, what's the dynamic between, and you had a good point about like who, who the onus is on when things, when something is triggering and mm -hmm. like, it's especially right now, I think it's, an, it's an interesting topic. I don't know what kind of outcome we're going to have by the end of this, but 
We don't I plan think it's, this. We, we don't plan don't. it. We just kind of see what comes up. And this is something that's been coming up a lot in my uh, social media sc scroll uh, with your clients. So it's like, yeah. it's something that's at top of mind for us. So yeah, today's going to be oh, all yeah. about triggering. I should have looked up a definition and we didn't, because I was like, I don't know if I know how to define it in a really beautifully, beautiful way. An eloquent way yeah. to define triggering. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I, I think mean, it's kind of said it earlier. It's like, it's something that, I mean, if I, if I had to just define it in a really loosey goosey way, I think it, excuse me, it's something that when you it's a it's a a word a phrase an image a story that a person a, a person that when you are exposed to it or hear it uh, or see it it kind of reconnects you with a past mm -hmm. trauma that you've had that that could make you relive it all over again or the feelings or come back up or, or it triggers a behavior so <laughs> now we're using the word to define the word well, and yeah, or my, my linguistics. How about that word? Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Ah, I knew we would get there. See, I might have forgotten the name of the show, but I remembered the word illicit. <laughs> it elicits a strong response. Right. So what kind of things, and I, I know you can't go into detail, but what kind of things do clients come to you about that could be considered a trigger or triggering for them? Does it run the gamut or is there specific? I think, stuff? I know, I, feel, I sound like a broken record every week, but I think a lot of times triggers can have to do with the way we feel about ourselves. But it also can tri be triggering, like, if somebody, uh, like something from our childhood, a, a parental figure or a significant figure, uh, a trauma, a trauma mm -hmm. that happened to us can be triggering. Um, um, you know, a situation that mimics something that was extremely emotionally devastating can set us off. So sometimes like a, a trigger can be something as simple as, for instance, I'll give you a deep, dark example. Please, deep and dark. If you think of like abuse, okay? Mm -hmm. And if somebody was um, abused by their father or a male person, and they're walking through their life and they hear a voice that sounds exactly like that person and have a very intense emotional reaction. Some people could even go as far as to have a panic attack about it, but that person's not there. Mm -hmm. But something about that person, the situation, the um, thing, if it's, a, if it's a thing that somebody was to see that's not an actual person, mm -hmm. um, that elicits such a strong emotional reaction that it feels like it's way off the charts with what's going on. So why, of course, would a man's voice almost put someone in a panic attack? Right. Nobody would understand that except that person when they realize that that voice just triggered a history of abuse by right. someone who had that same exact voice. Now that's a very serious yes. reaction. I, if there's anybody out there who, I want to preface this by saying, I see a lot of stuff online from people who use triggered as as a joke or a punchline mm -hmm. or like, oh, is this triggering you, snowflake, or like something like that to put people down. Please don't do that. That's, it's gross and it's wrong and it says more about you and your mental state than it does about the person that you're directing it at. I, I think, I think they're, what, somebody says triggers them is none of your effing business and if somebody says hey that's some triggering to me or hey that's something that i would rather not talk about hey why not just believe them and don't talk about it or yeah. don't reference it like you doing it after the fact or 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 continuing to say something or do something that somebody is saying elicits a, a strong reaction from them you're just being a bully and a jerk and a small person and yeah. don't do it. So, yeah. And what it could be in those instances too is the behavior of the person who was triggered might not have been great. Might have been, let's just call it bad behavior in reaction. Mm -hmm. And then if that person's having a hard time managing their behavior around the trigger and, it's, and is, is in fact behaving badly, let's just say, mm -hmm. then other people can come back with like those types of negative responses. I'm not saying anybody's right in that whole scenario. It's not about right or wrong. Right. Well, <laughs> not right, but like, yes, yeah. exactly. So that being said, also, I, I kind of picture 
when somebody says I'm, uh, you know, that's triggering for me or, you know, I have stuff that triggers me. We all have stuff that triggers a response from all of us. Um, I liken it to the way certain smells can elicit a really strong memory for us because our olfactory senses in our nose, like the bulbs that process sound or smells for us is hardwired directly into our brain. Like our, not even our prefrontal cortex, but like the, the place that processes memories and emotions and stuff. So like as soon as you smell fresh baked cookies or cut grass or something, it's like it triggers an, an emotion or a memory immediately without you even having to think about it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think when somebody says I'm, you know, something's triggering to me or something elicits a, a reaction, a strong reaction, that's what I think of. Like, <clears throat> when you smell cookies, it's like, oh, I have this memory immediately and I can't control it. No, well, you just made me think, and I don't know the answer to this, about just why is it always such a negative connotation? Because maybe um, smelling fresh cut grass, maybe smelling um, homemade cookies can, can trigger memories of somebody or childhood. Or, or of a grandma, or, or mm -hmm. making cookies with a special person um, that could, could probably elicit that same, uh, that's my word today, um, <laughs> that could probably bring up those same strong feelings, but more in a positive way also. Right. Just like the smells, sounds, tastes, everything can, can trigger you with negative and intense emotions. I think it could also do the same on the other side, too. Yeah. I don't know that we're going to spend much time talking about that, but I just wanted to note that part. That yeah. That's... That happens too. Yeah, tr so triggering could have a positive yeah. connotation as well. Yeah. But we don't, we usually use it in the, the negative capacity. Mm -hmm. So what kinds of things happen when somebody gets triggered? Like what kind of mental, physical reactions do people have? Well, I think it can happen very quickly, right? The, the reaction or the feelings, I'm gonna say the feelings. The feelings can happen really, really quickly. And in some cases, people can then react, right? Um, badly, yelling, um, attacking. I don't necessarily mean physically, but that mm -hmm. can happen too. Um, um, uh, worst case scenario, going to a full blown panic. Um, as well as sometimes it can happen, sometimes it can happen just similar to that, but all be internal where the person is just sort of uh, overwhelmed with the emotion. They don't necessarily react outwardly, uh, but they have, because of the intensity of what's going on, they have a hard time focusing on anything else, but sort mm -hmm. of takes over. Mm -hmm. And then what to do with it, right? Where some, so somebody that was overwhelmed and triggered could withdraw also. But that doesn't mean they're necessarily in any better space than somebody that acts out when they're feeling these feelings because they're then sitting with them and often not understanding them or beating themselves up about it. Like, why would you get so upset about this thing that so-and-so said? Who cares? Why are you being so sensitive? You know, mm -hmm. I hear that a lot. Why are you being so sensitive, being such a baby? And um, they're not thinking that. And then they like, start to logical ourselves, I call it where we start talking logically, but really what's active is our emotional self. So it's, our emotions are not often logical. So they're not, those two don't always communicate well. So, um, you know, it can be damaging, I think, in the way that we may act towards others, right? If we react negatively towards someone very strong. Um, and it also can be just as bad too when we don't react, but we're sitting with it. Because either which way, I think, it can cause problems in a relationship, if we're, any relationship, if we're acting out on somebody about it. But it also, nine times out of ten, is going to come back to us beating ourselves up as well. You're, that's so stupid. Why are you being so sensitive? Don't be such a baby. Why would you react that way? That was crazy. I'm crazy. So oftentimes, the part that as a therapist I see is so damaging about it is the way that we talk to each, to ourselves about it, especially if we don't have the awareness that it was a trigger, especially if we just think we like flew off the handle and we're crazy, we're on the crazy train, right? Yeah. Then we tend to um, really beat ourselves up quite a bit and that gets us nowhere. It's like a big giant negative. It's A, when we do that, we're not seeing 
what's the forest through the trees or whatever that thing seeing is? the forest for the trees or yeah yeah, 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 that yeah. Guy. yeah we're not seeing what's really going on right which has nothing to do with the thing in front of us and we're also beating ourselves up which is obviously super bad for our self-esteem so um and if we yell at someone or act we're going to do the same thing too mm -hmm. so being able to recognize and understand which a lot of people do through therapy although some people can do it on their own what's what's happening or at least just being able to identify a i am being triggered something is going on here because the level of react emotion i feel right now does not match x thing right and by being able to understand your triggers and where they come from and when they're happening it allows somebody to be more compassionate towards themselves potentially prevent themselves from behaving in a way that they don't want to behave in and, and hopefully be more um, understanding it rather than ju jump on that negative train of self-punishment. Yeah. And I, uh, again, that whole thing of why are you so sensitive and like stop being so sensitive, stop being crazy. Like it's, it's these over, it's these over the top reactions when somebody says, Hey, that triggered me, or that's, that's a sensitive topic for me or something like that. It's, it speaks to our, our general understanding and comfort with mental health in the United States. I think um, our idea of somebody who is not at a hundred percent mental health and capacity is damaged or flawed or less than in some way, which is completely false. Uh, please don't think that way about yourself or anybody else. Um, but also, I think every, like I said before, I think everybody gets triggered by something. And the more we can, like you said, realize, oh, I feel a certain way when that topic comes up or I see that person or I hear that thing, that's you being triggered and elic something's eliciting a response from you. And I think being able to step back and say, oh, wow, I wonder what that's about. Yeah. Is a great, is a great first step to understanding more about yourself and about the world and you know and what comes into my mind just because it's in the news everywhere and it affects me and and people i know and love is a lot of the attacks on the lgbtq community especially this dumb thing about people getting over the top angry about drag queen story time at at libraries like drag queen if you don't know what this is uh, th there's a bunch of cities in the U.S. I'm, I'm sure all over, but I can only speak for this country where library, local libraries have drag, drag queen story time where they come and they read a book to the kids and the kids freaking love it and the parents love it. It's like this really fun, happy time where people get together, do something crazy and fun. And all of these parents are so triggered of it. Like you're indoctrinating our kids and it's all about sex and you're wearing this stuff and you're flaunting. It's a man in a dress. That's triggered if I ever saw it. And yep, it has triggered. absolutely nothing to do with the drag queen, the performer, the kids there, the parents there, the library. It has to do with you and something in your past or your brain that's being triggered by what's happening. There is nothing sex sexy or illicit or weird happening but if you're mapping that on top of this kid's story time that's happening there's something going on with you and your personal life mm -hmm. and your history that's eliciting that response and you i think it would be beneficial for you to take a step back and take a breath and say wow why am I so angry about this thing that's happening that actually doesn't affect me yeah. at all? It's like anything else. If you don't like drag queen story time, don't go to drag queen story time. Yeah, exactly. If you don't like gay marriage, don't get gay married. If, you know, <laughs> it's like if you don't like this stuff, just don't do it. Yeah. I don't understand why people. I'm going off on a tangent. You but go. You go. I, I don't understand why people think. Oh, I don't like something, so that that means it's bad for everybody, yeah. and I have to get it's rid of it for everybody because right. it's wrong and terrible like where does that come from just don't do the thing don't watch don't watch the show don't listen to the music don't go to the the live event don't just don't do it let other people have fun you know mm -hmm. and so yeah take a breath take a step back and say oh my gosh why is this triggering me so why am i offended by this so much right. you know right and it takes a lot of practice to figure that out and awareness and wanting to be aware right you know 
when we start focusing outward, outward at everything else, right, then, you know, we can, we take it away from ourselves. We're not really looking at the real problem is why are you having such a strong reaction? I try to do this in my life. I do. And even if it's not like per se a trigger, I, I think sometimes if something's just really bothering me that happened and at first it was like, it happened and it bothered me a little but when it keeps staying with me I'm like I try to take a step back and like what is this Kristen mm -hmm. like something else is going on here that you are still thinking about it or talking about it or whatever the case may be so let's dig a little deeper now I'm a therapist I've done tons of therapy in my life. so <laughs> I know everyone doesn't doctor do heal thyself everybody doesn't do this but it's easy to be like just go off and then decide you're crazy and leave it at that. I mean, that's not good for you, but mm -hmm. I mean, people do it all the time. But I think, you know, I wanted to go back to something you said a few minutes ago with, you know, the mental health and people not being sensitive towards, I think too, if like, when you call people, when people would call someone, be, you're being sensitive, you're being this, you're being that, mm -hmm. two things come to mind. Number one, I think that happens, of course. Um, but I also think that, that people do it to themselves without anyone else saying anything. They, people mm -hmm. tell themselves that. Um, and the other piece is that, and we talked about this before we got started. I don't know if this is a good segue, but that how much onus is on the other person, you know, in the sense of um, if some per somebody triggers you, right and they don't know they triggered you because sometimes just doing nothing per se wrong i can't really do it with the thing in my hand but <laughs> air, air quotes, quotes. <laughs> um sometimes they don't do anything wrong but but something that they do triggers you for mm -hmm. whatever reason if you you may or may not and that's up to you choose to discuss that with this person depending on what the relationship is what's the context of the situation blah 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 but if you aren't going to share with this person something they're doing that I, I'm, I'm not thinking of a good example, but um, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, that, that that something they're doing is triggering you. I guess is the onus on you then that you're being triggered or that it keeps happening. Does that be a perfect example of you being angry at person whoever, um, spending a lot of time? thinking about person, whatever, talking to other people about this person, and they don't even know they did anything. And they're not gonna necessarily no. stop doing anything, so you're just gonna keep getting triggered. And then you could possibly just keep blaming them. But if you do not figure it out yourself and communicate it to someone, would we say the onus is on you at that point? I, I see what you're saying, and I have a perfect example, and because I think I've seen this before where, Maybe you have a friend who you hang out with who for some reason reminds you of somebody or some event or some traumatic thing that's happened and you may not know it on a conscious level, but there's something about them that's like gets you angry and you still hang out with them and you're still their friend. But every time you hang out, there's an argument or it's like a big thing and there's drama. Drama. My God, there's so much drama. 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 Uh, and you don't like you don't discuss it or address it in any way and it just keeps happening. I think I think that may be an example of what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, and I also started thinking about in romantic relationships that, you know, this happens quite a bit where somebody does something and it might not be a great thing, but maybe it, it, it but you have such a strong reaction to it because it's triggering something from a, a past person, mm -hmm. right? So it reminds me of the Usher song, You Remind Me. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, I went in there. And Go my look head, it up. Yeah, it's basically him talking about how he can't date this person because they remind him so much of somebody that broke his heart. So I think, yeah, I think it happens that, like that too, where you can't, you may have a reaction to something. I've done this, so I know that it's happened, where somebody does something and I have like an over the top reaction and I realize that it's it's because what that person did just triggered me from a, a past relationship where I was deeply hurt. So all of a sudden I see red or mm -hmm. whatever, and that person is that person, but really they're not. Mm -hmm. They just did one thing. And all of a sudden I went from zero to a hundred. And I think that this happens to people all the time. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, so it's, it's kind of on again, and I'm, it's, this comes up a lot, but that's cause it's, it's a, it's a truth bomb. It's a universal truth. truth. Bomb. I love that. It's up to both people in the conversation, the relationship, whatever the case may be to arrive with best intentions and being open. Like the person who is being triggered or does have a strong reaction to something that's happening, like you said, is, should be honest with themselves about what's actually happening. What's what's the trigger? Why do I, you know, if it keeps happening, why does this keep happening? Mm -hmm. And it's up to the other person too, who may not be being triggered, but may be doing the triggering unknowingly or something of like, if the person says to you, hey, this is an issue for me, being open and saying, oh, I didn't know that. Okay, right. cool. I'm glad we're having this conversation and talking about it because I care about you and I don't mm -hmm. want, you know. Or if you're a stranger and somebody says that something triggers you, just saying, oh, okay, great. Thank you for saying that. I'll know I'll know that from now on. Now I have that information and not saying, oh, just don't be so sensitive because that doesn't help and you're being a jerk. So don't do that. Yeah, it doesn't help. It, it doesn't, doesn't it never And helps. it's hard for people to admit that too. I mean... If somebody is brave enough and able to be vulnerable enough to tell you that, right. that's not easy to do. No, that's not at all. That's very vulnerable. And for somebody to have a critical negative reaction to someone that's putting themselves in that position, they just straight up don't sound like a good person. I'm sorry. Like, right. And also, I, I did a, a TikTok today on, on anger and how, how easy anger is and how easy hatred is because... You don't really have to think about it. You don't have to talk about it. You don't have to open up to anybody. You don't have to connect in any meaningful way with anybody. Being angry is super easy. And the harder thing to do and the stronger thing to do is being able to open up and, and talk to somebody about or mention like, hey, I have this thing, you know, that's the much stronger thing, the stronger position to be in Absolutely. and not, you know, just getting angry is easy. And, and I, I do this, I see this a lot with when I teach, um, when I teach new performers, like when I teach a one-on-one class, it, it's always like, it's very easy for them to slip into arguments because they're so easy. It's yeah. just like, Hey, we're let's, I can't think of anything else, they're but let's just yell acceptable. at each other. And it's socially acceptable. Very good point. It's socially acceptable to be angry rather than be caring and honest and open because that's seen as weak when it's quite the contrary. It's the strongest thing in the world. And I don't want to, the people who are listening to the podcast can't see this right now, but if you're watching us on YouTube, What's happening? the painting behind me, <laughs> I look like oh. there's a circle right oh above my, my God, head. That's perfect. So I look like now I'm gonna look at it the rest of the time. No, I look like one that. of those A's. Like if you go to IKEA and you look at some of the A's have the circle on top, it oh. looks like I have a little. Oh my God! Or I'm a Teletubby. We were just talking oh about God, Teletubbies. You are the Teletubbies Holy are here with cow. us. I didn't even notice it. <laughs> I did not. Now, Fun. now I can't. Now I can't. Now you unsee. can't now, now unsee I'm gonna it. Keep looking at it. Now you can't I'm unsee. Really it. I'm not moving because I'm comfortable. So I'm just gonna have a little. I'm just gonna have a little O over my head for the That's rest of this fine. episode. That's it's fine. Your thoughts. That's my there. little thought bubble. Yeah. It's empty, <laughs> as per usual. Well. Sorry. Getting yeah. back to the uh, the topic. Where were we? I forgot. Um, Sorry, I threw everything. That's all right. Off. No, I, I, I couldn't let it go. That. I have to See, address the, the room or yeah, the circle right. In the room. I had this circle over my head. Um, I forgot. Oh, we were talking anger. That's what we were talking about. Oh and yes, I, and I think you're right. I think that you know it's really easy for people to just decide they're angry about something, they're mad at someone, they hate someone, and and then dig their feet in. I've definitely dealt with this quite a bit and they don't want to budge and people struggle with forgiveness right people struggle with all these things and you're right it's easy but it's not it's easy but it's not it's easy in the sense that it's acceptable it's energizing it's powerful but it's a it's heavy at the same time because you're carrying all of that around and it starts to permeate all areas of yourself when you have a whole lot of it and then you become a negative person and then you can just become a shit angry person and then you're ultimately not happy. Right. So it's, you know, I think people 
kind of goes exact. I'm thinking right now of somebody, and it goes exactly what you're talking about. It's it's easier to just be crossing your arms and be like, I don't I don't like it, or I'm not talking about that, and they're they're this and they're that, and and I I have no interest in forgiving them. Then it is to to like peel back what's going on here. How did this person really make you feel under the anger? Um, you know, why is this such a strong, you know, really pulling away like to, I was so embarrassed by them. They uh, hurt me. They violated my trust. Mm -hmm. You know, really getting to what's under it because there's usually a lot of stuff under that. That's a lot harder to do and a lot of people are super resistant because especially if you're feeling a lot of anger or hatred or whatever you want to call it towards someone about something they did. Not only is it hard to be vulnerable, but by being vulnerable, I think people almost equate that with giving power to that other person. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Letting the anger subside and being vulnerable almost feels like you're giving giving in, giving them yes. the power back, giving them like almost like they're in the room if they weren't and they could see it. And they're like, oh, see, gotcha or whatever. And that can be very difficult to get through with people mm -hmm. is that you're not... No one's winning here. In fact, by figuring, talking about how you really feel and figuring out how to work through it, you're going to be a lot happier whether you decide to forgive that person or not moving forward. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a power thing. Yep. It all comes back to power. And anger doesn't come out of nowhere. You know, if somebody... And I, I think I've been focusing a lot on people who get angry at people that are say they were being triggered because I I'm always fascinated by why somebody has such an immediate strong angry reaction to something there's, so, there's something well, else going on there it's vulnerability right Some people are very uncomfortable right uh, so it's like anger it's not just anger anger isn't just anger because of anger anger is always masking how many something times else. can we say anger, anger 20 more times <laughs> uh if you're counting uh, it's always masking something else. It's Absolutely. about, like Most you said, the time. vulnerability, yeah. uh, powerlessness, uh, you know, fear. Those are the like big ones that, you know, I'm angry about this, but really I'm just uncomfortable about the topic or the situation or the person, you know, whatever the case may mm -hmm. be. And it's so much, it opens up so much more avenues for conversation and connection to just bypass the anger altogether and just be honest and say, hey, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Great. That I can work with. You saying, I'm angry about this. It doesn't help. I, like, great, you're angry, but what does that mean? Like, what, what is, what's underneath that? Well, I'm uncomfortable in this situation. Great. That's, that's something we can all use. Yeah. You know? But it's, it's easy to talk about. It's so hard. It's so hard to do, to do it. Do yeah. it. Some people never can do it. They just can't do it. Right. They just will go anger happy or whatever you want to call it. Like, it, you know, people right. that are angry and have a really short fuse and seem triggered if you want to call it bring it back bring um, it back by every little thing there's so much more going on there than and it's hard it's easy for us to sit on a couch you know in philadelphia and and say yeah. you know explain everything but i've gone through it i'm sure at some point you've yeah, gone through, we've all gone through these situations where it's 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 hard in that moment to do everything we're talking about but no just knowing that the what the truth of the situation is even if you can't really fully like consciously put your arms around it in the moment at least the knowledge is there you yeah. know of like that's that's what's really going on it's i think it i think it's easier to come down off of that anger high if that if that's a thing mm -hmm. of like with that knowledge of, I, you know what, it really is. There must be something else going on. Yeah, with this even person. if you don't know, like yeah. I'm, I'm talking about it. You're talking about it. I do this for a living, mm -hmm. so like I, you know, people that don't don't necessarily think this way. You know, I think just the first step is if you realize you're getting really upset. Or let's just say that to so make it real simple mm -hmm. about something that doesn't seem to warrant that level of being upset. Maybe trying to figure out what that is because it's it, there's something going on there right. with, with you. And some people can figure it out on their own. Some people don't want to figure it out. That's fine. They don't want to figure Got out if they were triggered or not triggered and why. Good. That's fine. 
if you do, you know, maybe you can figure it out with some thought. And again, not to keep promoting my, my business every week, but you, <laughs> that's part of why we're doing yeah. this. <laughs> but you may need someone to help you with that. Right. You know, people come to me and, and will say, I need help with my anger. I don't know why I'm so angry. And this is what we're talking about today is a lot of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, or my partner thinks I'm constantly angry and, and mad and, and never happy with anything or whatever the case may be that would bring them to me. And this is the type of stuff that we would do is dig down underneath it to try to understand because I know I'm beating a dead horse. I hate that saying, but I keep saying it because I love a horse. But anyway, you know, what people do to themselves around all of this, even those people you call, you call angry person, so-and-so is such an angry person. I guarantee you that so-and-so probably doesn't feel so good in their quiet moments at the fact that they're always so angry. Yeah. So what's going on internally, oftentimes people don't see, and it's pretty ugly. Yeah. And, you know, if you are somebody who is, who knows what triggers them, you know, and you, you try to talk to other people about it, be strong in yourself. You know, if, if you... You know, if there's stories you tell or there's, you know, people or situations that that are do elicit like this strong response from you and share, you know, to your level of comfort. But I mean, don't be afraid to share that, you know, if, oh. if it if there's somebody who's talking about something and you it's uncomfortable and you can't leave the situation, I, I'd be strong in yourself enough to say, hey, this is, you know, can we change yeah. the topic? And sometimes that might just be. I'm not, you know, I'm not comfortable with this topic. Can we change the right. topic? And that's it. And then with somebody that you're closer with, you may go to a different level. It doesn't need to be this big sit down, vulnerable circle of trust that you're going to have with <laughs> right. every person. You know, it could be to a boss even maybe where you say, um, you know, I, it really works better for me if you were to come talk to me face to face and send me which you're not happy with in an email, for instance. Like it, it doesn't need, you don't need to be super duper vulnerable with everybody. There is a way to communicate this stuff in different different ways to different people, depending on the relationship and what the environment is, right? It right. doesn't need to be. But I think the other piece is that we are still responsible for ourselves and our behavior, no matter what it, someone else is doing. So even if we do share it, that doesn't mean that we just like, oh, okay, you don't need to worry about that trigger anymore. Right. Now they know. Right. We're still, it's still our trigger. We might not have asked for it, what happened to us, it's coming up, but it's our stuff. And we're still responsible to try to figure out our, on our own or with some a professional, how do I cope in those situations? Right. Because just telling somebody once, even if they're a great person that loves you and wants, doesn't mean they're not going to do it, do it again. Right. Like accidentally or whatever the case may be. And... I just believe no matter what, we're responsible for our behavior. Yes. You can't ride the trigger train and be like, well, that was a trigger, so I'm allowed to punch you in the face. Like, no, <laughs> sorry, you're not. <laughs> Everything's a train. The negative train, the trigger train. I don't know why I didn't that know I was me. so into <laughs> Trigger train. No trigger train. Um, and also, uh, just touching back on the work aspect of it, because I think that's important, because that touches on a bunch of other things that we've covered in past episodes. Check those out. Yeah. Um, if you if you work a cert, work best under certain conditions or get getting certain feedback or communicating in a certain way with your teammates or your boss, say that you know put that information out there so people will know like oh okay great you prefer to have get one word one uh, one sentence emails and like have a five minute conversation great like that now we know how you work best. And it's also on your manager or your boss to be able to say, oh, this is how my team works best. Yeah. This is how the people on my team prefer to do stuff. And there's a way to find a middle ground where everybody's yeah. communicating in the best, yeah. you know, most efficient, effective way. Yeah, so, it just goes, sorry, I'm rearranging. That's okay. It just goes back to different ways to communicate the information right. in different scenarios. Right. Um... What else is there to say about this? I feel like we've we've hit the we've hit the end of the road. I think um, that the trigger train is pulling out. The trigger station. train is pulling out. <laughs> no, I, this is another. It's a big topic. And, it is. Um, 
you know, it's just about being self-aware and, 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 and when something that seems to be out of the ordinary with you happens, feelings or behavior both, that to take a step back and try to understand rather than get, criticize yourself. Right. And the same with somebody else. Somebody else is triggered and they, you're like, what the hell was that, you know? Instead of being, wanting to attack them and, and, and all that, maybe think, hmm, I wonder what's going on with them. Right. Right. And if you're somebody who doesn't believe in the word triggered or, you know. Find a different word. Find a different word. This elicits a response. Like, I have this reaction to this thing. Mm -hmm. Why is one of the most powerful questions in the any language? Why? K? K? <laughs> Uh, I don't know how to say it in French. I don't either. That was uh, funny. Por qué? <laughs> uh, but it's a powerful question. One word question. And if you ask yourself that more often, I feel like mm -hmm. you, you get more, gain more knowledge of self, yeah. more knowledge of other people. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not a, it's not a, a soft thing. It's not a, a powerless thing. It's not, it, it's, it, it's the most powerful thing you can do. You know? Yeah. Because <clears throat> why asking why when something happens, especially if it's something you don't like, can run interference on being judgmental. Mm -hmm. That's what's the best thing about it. And it's not it's so easy to talk about it, but it can be so hard to do. And I'm definitely not perfect on this one at all. But I try. You know, is it's just saying why did that happen or why is the person doing X, Y, or Z? Um trying to understand that is it is can prevent a lot of assumptions judgments and critiques if we're able to do that right and if you don't like the word why you know what okay. what makes me do that you know per k okay uh yeah so a ask more questions that's why leading back to hey, it let me ask you that's something. why oh, hey let, let me ask you something exists because that's what we want mm -hmm. to inspire more people to do ask more questions and you get more answers. Um, if you uh, want to connect with us directly, our contact information is in the show notes. Uh, if you have a question for us that you want to ask us specifically, where can they write us? Hey, let me ask you something at gmail.com. Yep. It's all or, one word. Um, my email is the Philly Therapist Kristen at gmail. I am accepting new clients. Ooh. Anyone is for a Please take her up on that offer. She's amazing. Thank you. Um, and if you're in Philly or in the surrounding area and are interested in improv or comedy or talking to me in my coach capacity, uh, hit me up. I'm on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. Stop uh, bragging. Right. I'm on all the social medias. <laughs> Uh, I may or may not have the circle over my head. I think you should just keep I think put I should keep there. that yeah, where we need yeah. to get a little one and put it up there. Right? Mm -hmm. Um all right friends, Thanks. that's all we have today. Thanks. See you next Thanks. time. Bye. Bye.